Hey guys, this is Matt Winning at winningstrength.com and today we're going to talk about how to use the max effort method in order to get stronger. There's a lot of history and a lot of experimentation and experience with this. So let's hang on and let's find out how to use this method to the max. The max effort method, or what I would consider the Bulgarian method, is a method in which we go to maximum strain. Maximum strain usually in the rep range of one to five repetitions. Now that's a pretty broad scale, but the reason being is that one is mostly a neurological adaptation, whereas five has some hypertrophy effects as well. So you'll find a lot of great athletes, especially squatters, bench pressers, and delicers, who will utilize fives immensely to get better because it's kind of that hybrid rep range. So what we need to first understand is that the reps that we use need to be between one to five reps for our max effort attempts, okay? Now, the problem is, is that the max effort method becomes very highly neurological. It has a lot of neurological burnout associated with it. So what we have to do if we're gonna use the maximum effort method is we probably need at minimum eight to 20 different exercises to rotate. Now these rotation of exercises are going to change based on the fact of where our weaknesses are. So some of this might involve a straight bar squat. Then it might involve a safety bar box squat. Then it might involve a max effort belt squat or a good morning. You see the exercises are all very similar in what muscle groups they may or may not attack, but what they are doing is they're rotating the pressure gradient. So the max effort method, although it's a great method in order to get stronger, it needs variety in order to be sustained for long periods of time. So for me personally, I will not do an exercise any greater than every six weeks. This means if I straight bar squat with a straight weight, I won't touch that other exercise again for almost another six weeks. And you ask, well, Matt, how do you get better at doing anything? Because the exercises I select between those weeks is all based on my weaknesses. So the maximum effort method needs rotation, but it needs rotation in a weakness style of understanding of what you need at what time. So right now we're doing a lot of stiff-legged deadlifts. We're doing a lot of good morning machines. We're doing a lot of those particular things because I feel my posterior chain needs to catch up. So as you can see, the maximum effort method has a lot of great advantages, but it also has great disadvantages if you use the same exercises too often. Now, what does it actually change? Well, we talked a little bit about that, but most of the time, max effort is neurological. I can both internal and external motor unit coordination. This means I can get my muscles to balance themselves, meaning my hamstring, quad, low back, everything works in synchronicity, and I can also balance an external environment. That's why it's so important that the maximum effort method be utilized on a semi-consistent basis based on the fact that you want this neurological change no matter what your goals are for weight training. But the other major thing that you need to understand is that this, because of the amount of time that we're at, which is only one to five reps, it has pretty much low hypertrophy. So we don't gain a ton of hypertrophy with the maximum effort method, especially in the one, twos, and threes, because the time under tension is just not long enough, okay? So sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is pretty much out the window because we're not having enough time to create byproduct. So what we do create is myofibular hypertrophy. So if we look at the two different types of hypertrophy, what we develop, this would be sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. So the cell is the same size as this one, but we don't have as many actus and myosin cross bridges. Whereas in this one, we have quite a bit more in the same size. So for females and athletes that are trying to get stronger without gaining weight, the maximal effort method is also an immense tool in order to do so because you're gonna increase myofibular hypertrophy but not sarcoplasmic or bodybuilding style hypertrophy because the time's just not long enough, okay? So I hope this helps you guys out in understanding 
what the maximum effort method is. It is a way to train that increases maximal tension, usually over 90%. Its neurological benefit is internal and external motor unit coordination. It has myofibular hypertrophy properties, but not a lot of sarcoplasmic hypertrophy properties. You need a vast array of exercises to rotate in order for you to not burn out psychologically and to create mileage at different points so that the body can rejuvenate. Make sure that you don't use the same exercise for max effort work, but once every six weeks, and that's at minimum. Sometimes we don't do it every 10 or 12 and your rep ranges need to be between one and five reps in order to make sure that you're not pushing into an endurance phase where it's not really maximum effort. Okay, so maximum effort's cut off line, in my opinion, is five reps. If you wanna know more about this, go check out the powerlifting manual. Also ask any questions you'd like on Patreon. We'd be more than happy to answer those for you. And just make sure that this is a part of your training. So if we look at this right here, you know, and a thought process should be this, right, M-E, which is max effort, okay? DE, which is dynamic efforts, and RE, which is repetition method. So if we separate, and this is our 360 degree circle, 33% of our energy goes to maximum efforts, 33% of our energy goes to dynamic efforts, and 33% of our energy and thought process goes to the repetition method that we should be able to develop at a high level without creating any particular mileage and getting better at nearly everything that we do. Talk to you guys later.